Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today, I'm Vladimir Solohub. On July 18th, the joint Ukrainian-U.S. multinational maritime exercise Sea Breeze 2016 kicked off in southeastern Ukraine. The annual military drills have been taking place in Ukraine since 1997. But ever since Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, these drills seem to have more of a political rather than military character. Join me now to discuss this year's military exercise in the Black Sea as Mr. Ihor Kabanenko, a retired Ukrainian admiral and now president of Ukrainian Advanced Research Project Agency. Mr. Kabanenko, welcome to Ukraine Today. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. So, Mr. Kabanenko, do you agree with the statement that in the past several years these military exercises, the sea breeze, um, have more of a political significance rather than military? Uh, politically, this exercise is important, especially in this year, because it's, uh, this exercise demonstrates uh, mechanisms of solidarity of uh, uh, American community, Euro Atlantic community with Ukraine for against hybrid threats. And of course, this is uh, especially important from my point of view. Uh, keep in mind the situation, not easy situation, this balanced situation in the Black Sea region. So political aspect is very important. But also I would like to also to say a couple of words about military aspects because in this year uh, we can see uh, that during this exercise this year uh, more uh, training, uh, let's say advantage uh, military training advantage in this exercise, Sea Breeze, because a lot of uh, mobile training teams took part in this exercise. Uh, different uh, trainings for our personnel, uh, not only, let's say, for our combat as a combat activities, but uh, uh, to survive in a different uh, during different scenarios to. Uh, keep uh, vulnerability to uh, keep a good how to keep a good uh, level of combat readiness and so on and also uh, uh, one more important aspect from my uh, point of view also this aspect uh, is correlated with uh, uh, final communique of uh, Warsaw summit uh, it means deterrence uh, mechanism mechanisms of uh, deterrence in black sea region because uh, it's uh, no doubt that uh, after uh, occupation of Crimea, militarization of Crimea, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, uh, problems created in terms of disbalance of power in this region. It's, from my point of, of view, it's also a mechanism to keep uh, good uh, parity in the Black Sea region it also, it, and also uh, it demonstrates of uh, some mechanism of uh, deterrence in this region. Mr. Kovanenko, now that you mentioned the Warsaw Summit, one of the key decisions during that summit was to increase the contingent of um, NATO member troops uh, across the eastern border of the NATO countries. We will now see almost 4,000 uh, soldiers from the U.S., Canada, Germany uh, placed across Poland and the Baltic countries. In, in light of this fact, do you, think, do you think that we will see more of the joint military drills between Ukraine and NATO member countries, which uh, obviously one of the, 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 the effects of these drills, which, which they have, is Russia's constant unhappiness and uh, with, uh, with, with such maneuvers. Yes, of course, uh, it's an important uh, decision of Warsaw Summit. Uh, they call this uh, the, uh, the shift to uh, uh, eastern uh, borders uh, of NATO. It's of course it's also some kind of it's also mechanisms of uh, deterrence uh, against those uh, hybrid threats and hybrid warfare built by by Russia. What about uh, the joint exercise? Yeah, Do you think Ukraine it, can yeah, count yes, on this? Yes. Uh, of course, for us it is important. It's uh, what we have to pay more attention in this uh, context and uh, and uh, to take part in different exercises. Uh, also, we have experience of participation uh, in exercises CMAX and exercises uh, of uh, highest readiness forces, NRF, NATO response forces, and other uh, programs, exercises, and so on. I think this is also, we need to strengthen our relations, uh, our cooperation in this field. And also, this is 
this can bring a lot of uh, capabilities for our um, forces. Also keep in mind for what in our uh, uh, strategic defense building, we've got uh, obligation uh, to build our armed forces to transform, to reform our armed forces based on NATO standards up to 2020. It's ambitious uh, task, but I think this is also a good instrument, a very important instrument to uh, to take m pay more attention and to take part in different NATO exercises in different, uh, based on different scenarios and based on, uh, let's say, civil military uh, cooperation, civil military aspects. Uh, from the military perspective, what kind of benefits does it give to Ukraine and Ukrainian army? Because obviously, Ukrainian army will not be part of NATO um, um, anytime soon. So, does the, do these exercises simply increase the capability of the Ukrainian army, or is there any other benefits? From my from my point of view. Uh, it's two-way road, two ways road. Uh, one hand, of course, it's a possibility to implement the best NATO standards uh, in different spheres, not only, let's say, uh, uh, technical, operational, administrative, organizational, military standards, but also it's an opportunity for NATO countries to accept our experience, to learn lessons of what we've got during this uh, war, because this is new style, new uh, on the West. You can uh, hear uh, uh, what they call this in NATO, in, in the United States of America, they call this new generation warfare. It's really new generation warfare because based on new methods, new technologies, and new approaches how to fight. Uh, so we've got a lot of experience and also we can, we can uh, help our Western colleagues to understand, to better understand this environment and also to accept necessary standards uh, how to fight, how to better fight and win in this war. So uh, it's two-way road, two-way road and also it's a good opportunity for both. It's a mutually beneficial approach from my point of view. Uh, Mr. Kabanenka, if we could go back to these um, military drills in the Black Sea and uh, talk a bit about Ukrainian fleet. Um, uh, there were some experts who were saying that Ukraine, after the illegal occupation of Crimea, is, has simply been left with one real battleship which did not take play, it did not part, take part in these years' exercise. So why does Ukraine need these, mili uh, these naval exercises, whereas its military fleet is so diminished? Uh, it's, a, it's, um, it's a good question, but uh, also it's an uh, it's opportunity right now that we have uh, not uh, perfect, let's say, naval capabilities. Uh, it's also a, a possibility to build more strong, more comprehensive cooperation, to uh, better understand this environment for all participants of uh, uh, exercise of this, exercise, be better understand this maritime environment, this situation in maritime economic exclusive maritime economic zone. It's not easy situation because uh, not only Ukraine is a is a, a state. Uh, Black Sea state, Black Sea country, also NATO countries, they have also their own interests here, they have also exclusive economic zones here, and also for them it's also the same threats right now. So cooperation in this field, cooperation in terms of clarification situation, in terms of uh, you know, uh, possibility to better understand each other, understand this, this environment, and also to uh, train uh, how to better respond, adequately respond. It's 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 an advantage also of this exercise. It's it's a good way also to create some kind of capabilities. I would also uh, mention what during this summit, unfortunately, it was not a decision in terms of proposal of Romania. Uh, we know what Romania proposed before summit to create some kind of NATO Black Sea fleet here uh, in Black Sea. Uh, we've involved also Ukraine proposed our own capabilities, naval capabilities. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, uh, this decision did uh, not uh, took place. Uh, but uh, it was decision to pay more attention on exercises. Uh, to carry out different uh, exercises, to analyze situation and build more close cooperation with Ukraine. So, 
uh, it's also uh, advantage, it's also opportunity for us uh, how we can create our necessary capabilities because we have lack, uh, we have uh, problems here. Uh, because our partner countries, they can uh, propose for us uh, different platforms, maritime platforms, and uh, for us it's a question how we can use the, those proposals, how, how we can, uh, uh, based on, again, I would say it's, it's important of uh, cost-effective approach to create necessary capabilities. So, uh, dialogue, cooperation, uh, common uh, evaluation of common threats, and uh, creation of best way how to, how to fight, how to win. But yet, in 2014, when there was a very direct and immediate threat of Russia occupying the Crimea, nothing has been done about, uh, about, about this threat, threat, including by these countries who are uh, part of this Black Sea exercise or uh, by any other uh, NATO member countries. So what kind of hopes Ukraine can have for the future and what kind of cooperation Ukraine can talk about and what kind of a addressing of threats Ukraine can talk hope in the future, whereas during the most recent threat, nothing has been done? From my point of view, it's, uh it's uh, our hope it's uh, to build uh, the more comprehensive more smart let's say cooperation to better response of uh, these modern threats what what activated what uh, those threats is not the same as it was before and of course uh, we have to uh, use our experience from the from past uh, uh, platforms uh, of cooperation what uh, took place before but uh, use them on uh, based on on, on uh, clarification of those concrete uh, asymmetric threats these hybrid threats what exist right now so it's not easy easy way uh, it's a way of uh, um, understanding of this situation, but it's only one way to survive. Why? Because if in this region we will uh, only face uh, this disbalance of power, it was only, uh, it, it is al also a uh, lesson from uh, past. If it would be not a uh, balance of power in this region, it would be a region of war. We have to remember that and also use our common efforts, to bring our common efforts to avoid this scenario. Well, it looks like indeed some very complex issues there. Mr. Kovanenko, many thanks for finding the time to Thank come you. and talk to us. We were discussing the multinational joint military exercise in the Black Sea and uh, the challenges and threats Ukraine is facing in the Black Sea region and the ways to address them with former Admiral Mr. Ihor Kovanenko. I'm Volodymyr Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.